Greeting. My name is Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. Welcome back to Mask of the Rose. Last time, we met some interesting fellows uh, uh, in the uh, Landau's. And for the record, Yeah, and for the record, a Landau is sort of is a type of carriage. And, and yeah. And also, we got a visit from the clergy. We're worried about uh, peop uh, people who might literally be devils. Possibly. Whatever the hell that even means. St. Alban was the first English martyr, a point of considerable pride to the local vicar. It's the church of our parish. Okay, but before I do that, recall the past. Let's see, another memory from the jumbled grab bag. I glimpsed something in a bit of a of mirror. Ooh. There, that's in a mirror, I saw something that wasn't my reflection. A Mongolian woman. She sat at a desk in a flooding palace and the milky water come level with her knee. She wrote in haste. Her hands were gory with ink, ink stained and dimmed the firebirds embroidered on her sleeve. The glimpse of me goaded her. The ink bottle upset. Blue black bloomed in the flood water. That's not precisely what I was expecting from the mirror. Mongolian woman, you say? Huh. Perhaps... Perhaps the Rosers... Uh, maybe. No. No, no. Perhaps the Connate. Anyways. Let's go visit the parish. Or, no. Parish. Why did I say parish? Uh, proto... Yeah. Actually, it might be a parish. Uh, let's see. Probably put on the census badge since I'm here to take the census. I find Theopolis polishing the church silver. The Ministry of Accounting and Recounting have asked me to work on the census. Theophilus shows no enthusiasm for the Ministry. I don't blame him. A decree went out from, from Caesar Augustus that, that all the world should be taxed. Render unto Caesar, as they say. Oh, there was rend to Caesar. Whatever. And what does Caesar want at the moment? Ah, what was the point I gave to him? Hang on, let me double check. There was, n there was not a great deal in the poor bar. Just a few answers about your habits. It will only take a moment. Flirting with a clergyman, probably not the best of choices. Do you live alone? I live alone in the rooms provided for the vicar of this parish. There is a woman who comes twice a week to clean. Or, there was. Her visits have been more erratic of late. She stole several spoons and a chafing dish from me. And my second best chasuble. Who knows what she thought to do with it. When I did not turn her off for dishonesty, she lost all respect for me. In which respect, it was an error. I thought to show mercy. Now I sleep on damp sheets. Ask a critical question in a reassuring way. There's no danger in these questions. Are you unmarried and unencumbered? No secret mistresses. I was married. The lady was two or three years older than myself. A very sensible and capable woman. Ah, yes. 
this is the uh, Church of England, not the Catholic Church. So there's no prohibition on the clergyman marrying. It's another one of those ossified rules propped up by the Catholic Church that a lot of other churches have dispensed with. So, as, as good old Reginald would put it, better paganry than popery. Anyways. A very sensible and capable woman. Her name was Anne. That's where we came his wife. And whether Nick is no longer with you? It is a sad but not unusual tale. What's the expectations of the church? I hope as a man of the cloth you set a good example in marriage. Theophilus hesitates. Ah. You've earned my trust. Anne died giving birth to our first child. The baby did not survive her by more than a few days. I'd hoped to be reunited with them in the hereafter, but we, but we see what the hereafter has proven to be. At least in my case. It seems the Almighty has deemed me unworthy. Challenge his theological interpretation. Yeah, that, I would uh, agree. After all, it is the duty of the church to, you know, bring light to the deepest darkness and all that. This, you might think that it deemed you unworthy, but it seems to me that it's that it that he has deemed you worthy, worthy of ta of taking up his mission into the darkest of chasms. I hope that's what this means. I doubt the Almighty takes that view. Vengeance is his, as they say. We find ourselves here in the dark. Ah. Something has landed on the roof. It's... Point out that it's far, far too large to be a bat. Larger than any bat I've seen. Larger than an eagle, I'll come to that. A gargoyle? An imp? It's landed there a few times before, especially when the choir is practicing. <laughs> Shout wildly at the thing. This is a plan with neither flaw nor chance of error. Hey! You! Get off of my cloud! Fly away! The thing tilts its head. Perhaps it is looking at us. Shh! Up! Oh, yeah! The thing up there is gone. Theophilus says nothing. He is still listening to the thing on the ceiling. Well, he's not inaccurate. Or at least not entirely inaccurate about it being a bat. In much the same way that a raptor is a bird. Well, that is to say, in much the same way a velociraptor is a bird. Uh, I'm, I'm judging by what I've seen, I'm quite certain that it is one specific bat. You might know it. It goes by the name of the Vake. Eh, who knows? Yeah, that's what happened to the church roof. Probably, well, the fault. Tell me, what happened to the roof? Ah, that. We must assume the fabric of the building sustained significant damage in the fall. The funny thing is, it held up for weeks. But shortly after Pentecost, it came, it all came down. Ah. Uh, ah, yes. The Pentecost, also known as Whitsun, or White Sunday. Eh. That's actually a quite notable event in fallen London, but only in recent years. 
I choose not to construe this as an intervention of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> At least there's no risk of rain. Uh, I'm gonna pray for ongoing providence of that kind. I'll pray for the church room. There must be an overwhelming number of such intercessions just at the moment. It was good of you to stop in. Lord, see you safely home again. Make sure we're setting out the food now. Oh. Oh, uh. Theophilus, few predators, hot flying creature. Pick up the label before I go to dinner. I suppose you've heard the news. <laughs> Assume that all news is bad news. What's happened now? Surely London has suffered enough? The masters have received word from the surface. The rest of the world is all still there. The remains of England, France, all the rest as it was. Only London was abstracted. Abstracted? There are crates and crates of mail from the world above. They're going out to London now as we speak. How are the masters controlling this access? It would be the masters and no one else to control the way back. I don't know what you think that signifies. The masters are the ones who know the most about what is going on. I don't. What it signifies is that we still that they clearly have access to the surface. And yet we don't. Why is that, do you think? Archie, did you hear? I did at that. So it's true? I mean to get a seat on the next mail coach that goes above. Ah, I'm not sure that the mail comes by- it came by coach. And certainly did not come by train. <laughs> well, however it came, I mean to go back on that road. There's other ways one might reach the surface. God. I wonder what that means. Maybe there was a carriage drawn to the upper earth by a team of giant moles. Look, Mr. Page has sent us all a gift. She takes out a package wrapped in brown paper and string and sets it down on the table. Inside are half a dozen fresh pork and apple sausages. Better than Christmas, love. Thank your Mr. Pages for us. I'll make them up for Sunday lunch. <laughs> Tell Chris to have Mr. Pages spend the whole ham next time. Next time, have Mr. Pages send us a ham. It is Mr. Hart who will govern the importation of and, and distribution of meat. Oh, hi. Is there a Mr. Diamonds and a Mr. Spades as well? <laughs> uh, this one. No. Mr. Stone sees to precious gems. As for gardening implements, I doubt there's much call in the Nayat. <laughs> How many masters are there, then? I have only seen the census pages for a few of them. Hmm. Well, that's a... How many pastors are there? Well, that's actually a difficult question. Even for me, who... Uh, who knows a, quite a lot about the masters. I mean... <laughs> yeah. What, uh... Yeah, one might uh, one might argue that there are, for instance, one might think that there are eleven. One might argue that there that there's nine or even ten. One might argue that there are in fact eleven, but not the eleven you might be thinking of. Uh, one might even argue that there are twelve, but that's. Uh, not happened yet. It's a complicated business. 
see. Well. For once, I know just what I'll see in the paper. Contact achieved with the surface of the Earth. Travel possible via Z route. Mail collected from above. It goes on and on like this. I spend a good part of the morning devouring the pages. <laughs> okay. What are we seeking now? There are hardly any pictures. It's too early for illustrations. Nonetheless, the paper's correspondence paint a vivid picture of the perilous travel back to the environs of Italy. Not that. Let's do some more recalling. Let's see. She searched his books for some precedent. Precedent for what? I'm surprised that you're trying to read in this light, Archie. He held up the volume he was perusing. Thought I, I thought I remember there was a bit about the Welsh tornado here, and I was not wrong. Makes an elevating change from your usual reading about Medici poisoners, I suppose. Or was it Medici? She had caught him a day or so before, reading a history of toxins over the supper table. That, this had been the subject of quite a few jests since. I was wrong, pray, or try and for a wee bit of knowledge as a druggist. Sola dosis facet venenum, as books say. Nothing's a poison unless you give the wrong amount. We are affected with drugs! Very poor choice of words. God, I know what's happening now. Mr. Pages. Sir, uh, served a vast creature and experimented with drugs. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, that's, that's not entirely in, uh, beyond the realm of possibility. Um, so to speak. Let's see. What to do, what to do. Dare to question Mr. Pages about my ministry theories. Yes, finally. We need to get around that. I get around to that, rather. Yeah, I should put on the ministry badge. Why not? Since I am... <laughs> in, uh, since I am doing my official duty of interrogating people. With questions. When I arrive, Mr. Pages raises his head at me, uh, raises his head and looks at me without saying anything. Do you have anything more? Never finished census page about Theophilus. Mr. Pages is pleased enough with my information to give me two pennies. Green specificated the existence of holy men who are wedded to the church. This one appears to have been wedded to a woman only. Disappointment, though we thank you. It might have been something more. Yeah, that's not the kind of wedi uh, wedding they're wedding they're talking about. Sorry, but people being wedded to inanimate objects, uh, people uh, people being married to places is strictly the purview of the first city, not the fifth. More or less, it contemplates the final sheet of the census form again. That is enough of my official duties for the moment. Tell Pages about the tentacular thing ruling the Nan. Does the tentacle creature spread under the Nan? I believe you serve its will. This is not so. It is an incorrect. It is disapproved. That is enough of my official duties for the moment. Ask whether the masters always knew the way to the surface. The masters always know the way above. We were only waiting until a suitable time to tell us that the surface is, is still there. There is always a way for us. But you, sometimes it hides itself. We did not hide the route. Doubt. <laughs> if this is gonna be a L.A. Noir style doubt, I might be accusing him of being a child molester. You fuck little boys, Mr. Pages. <laughs> you could have helped us. Uh, you could have helped us if you wish to. 
Why should we wish to? Says it all, doesn't it? I say very well to Mr. Pages. Pages does not reply at all. It is difficult to tell whether Mr. Pages is intentionally ill-mannered or, or merely has no interest in discovering what the proper etiquette might be. Besides the court, Mr. I do not like Mr. Pages. I can feel the frown forming on my face. Right. You're looking well. Hog Slain Market, the Devil's Townhouse, the Menace Eradicate, the Devil's Townhouse. Pardon me? Have you seen any devils? If by that you mean the people with yellow eyes. Yes. They have taken over a townhouse, that way. He points out a direction. You can see them coming and going sometimes. And the occasional vicar, stand uh, vicar standing outside to stare in. So we walk together, and every few moments, Harjit stops to point out a landmark. Or draw my attention to the places where the air smells different, or the sound of church bells can be heard. Alright. They say this place is inhabited by devils, or alternatively, people with yellow eyes and a warm handshake. Harjit takes a look at the devil's doorstep and raises his eyebrows. It's plain he has no taste for this company, so I say goodbye and go on alone. The door knocker is made of brass. Unreasonably warm brass. And it is shaped like the head of a goat. The attendant is human enough, but she refuses to answer any questions. I wait in a very old-fashioned wooden, uh, wooden chair. I keep feeling that the armrests are nipping at my wrists. I am invited inside at last. Look at these bozos. With their ridiculous, anachronistic fashion. Ah, uh, what voice to give her? A member... A member of the constabulary. We do not require your assistance. Milton will see you out. Your eye for detail has failed you, Virginia. Our visitor wears the badge of the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. I collect this is some official errand. Present myself as strong if unfriendly. I go by kiddo. I go by milk. I dislike four names. You may address me as Virginia, or Ma'am. Though I don't like- uh, though I don't want to meet you, and it's plain you don't like the look of me either. It's the fall that's done it. Can't keep to our old circles these days, can we? They both fall extremely still. I'm not sure that they breathe. So, explain that I'm working for the Ministry on the Census. You know that the Ministry has sent me to work on the Census. Their work is vital for London. Probably. You may have mistaken your authority. The masters do not direct us. It will not take long. We are in the middle of a delicate matter. Come now, Virginia. Wouldn't you find it entertaining to learn what the masters are asking? I admit to significant curiosity. Just what does the Ministry hope to learn about you and me that it doesn't already know? Then ask and be prompt, you know. And if this proves a waste of our time, Milton, you will owe me your good hunting horn. Make the mood even more disagreeable. <laughs> That's always a good time when it comes to devils. When I reply, my tone is harsh. How many unfortunates have trapped in your household with you? I reside alone. You have servants? I do. Several. I had assumed that they would not be counted as persons. Unfortunately for you, this is London, not hell. We consider all as persons. You must trust me on this sort of thing, Virginia. I have had more time to learn London's customs. Not enough, evidently. And you frequently entertain overnight visitors. Never for very long. 
I have a maidservant, a housekeeper, and three drones. Drones? Oh right, I forgot. Devils are bees. That's not a joke, by the way. That's actually... Well, <laughs> it's mostly true. Footman. Yes, footman. Show some doubt. Have you seduced any young ladies or gentlemen with false promises? Is anyone waiting for wedding bands that will not come? Lying is an amateur's method. Hell deceives with truth and confuses the listener with her own beliefs. Lie. <laughs> Bold-faced lie. Actually. L uh... Now... With, an, uh, with the mark of an amateur is getting a reputation for lying. Hell makes itself out to be that sort of clever, fey-like douchebaggery, but it's all a lie. They lie all the time. Compulsively, almost. <sighs> Don't fall for their propaganda, is what I'm saying. You plainly have appetites and the means to satisfy them. The question is whether you follow any restraint. Ah, an interesting question. Several persons have believed themselves to be romantically attached to me. Will that do? You're not engaged to any of them? Of course not. And not married. That I can safely rule out. Definitely not married. I doubt any house of God would allow you to darken its doorstep. I turn my senseless curiosity on Virginia. Virginia is a, Virginia is a fashionable name. Is a fine name. Fashionable. One tries to accommodate the local culture. That is, one tries until it becomes too much bother. Our friend implies that the name does not distinguish you from the common or garden variety Virginia. It might benefit from a poetic epithet. Amber-eyed Virginia, for instance. London poets have a taste for that kind of thing. Brass-shod Virginia. You must ensure that it scans. Do not write that down. Virginia of the Cloven Hoof? Definitely not. Pity. Pity. I turn I th you just said that, what? Simply ask about our affairs of the heart. Are you in love? Do you keep your beloved's heart in a jeweled coffer? I have no romantic involvements that you need report to your employers. A politician's answer. <laughs> Ask Milton about his work. That's it. Ask him about the purpose of this building. What sort of business is typically typically done here? Diplomacy. Commerce. Contracts are written and signed. Gathering of information. Hmm. I, I'm sure that'll go well. Because they're solicitors. Contracts? Are you solicitors? Those who solicit? The term implies some engagement with the law. London law? Law in general, really. An inferior product, I agree. <laughs> but they're not talking about uh, laws in that sense. They're talking more about natural laws. We are not solicitors. This line of questions is proving more difficult than I anticipated. I'm keen to hear about your business, all the same. Stand closer to Virginia and ask again. And I thought you were getting to trust me. Our secrets are the sort that would peel your skull from your brains. Now that's a poor excuse. You have now taken as much time as we can spare. At least you don't say whatever you are thinking, like most of London. But dishonesty is not alluring in itself. So pray don't feel I will pine for you in your absence. I thought I was speaking my mind pretty... 
pretty fucking strident name, but all right. All right, person, Virginia. It started snowing outside. It isn't ordinary snow. No shit. Something has gone very badly at the Ministry. Mr. Pages took away a great supply of our papers. Together with many of the books and novels it has assembled. I mean, yeah, it's snowing underground. No shit, it's not normal snow. <laughs> All of them taken into the bazaar in wheelbarrows. So many that it attracted quite a crowd. Thought those were for his personal collection. No, he was always planning to take them to the bazaar. But it didn't go well. And that seemed to concern him even more. He said London might not last long in the snow. Don't worry. Mr. Page is easily agitated. I don't think that means we are safe. This lacquer is hardly the safest of substances, but... No, we're not drowning yet. Mr. Pages has a very lively fear of what may happen next, and I cannot put this out of my head. No one speaks for a moment. I chew diligently. Dinner reaches an end. Alright. Five days remain in the season of confessions. The newspapers aren't what they used to be, but someone is still printing broadsheets these days. The headlines today read, Marchioness accused of liaisons with squid-faced men, rumors of octopod heir to the Marquisate. Unlikely. I don't think the rubbery men can reproduce in general, really, but especially not with humans. If I'm not too occupied otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, let's do some more calling. Uh, storm, long before the fall. The memory of lightning flashes, and the memory of rain covers my face. And I am back above in a summer downpour. All the horses and their riders huddled under the, sail br the rail bridge. All the saplings bent to kiss the soil. Not just any summer, but a June evening when I was 15. And though I have not thought of it since, and though I will never see the like again, that storm for a moment is truth itself. And our present cavern is embarrassed to be seen through. An illusion. Alrighty then. Work on my relationship with Virginia. What relationship with Virginia? Let's see. Uh, let's continue my seduction of Grizz. I haven't been working on that at all lately. The hack gives me an air of authority. Liable when it comes to Grizz. Yeah, she seems like the sort to like to be to be working under someone, if you catch my drift. Nice hat. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Give, give me a distrusting look. Told Mr. Pages you're making further progress with the census. I'm sure he's eager to see what you've collected as soon as you're ready. To be honest, I'm slightly curious myself. There's more in these forms than I expected. I laugh knowingly. London contains a surprising number of out-of-work costermongers, not so many bankers as I have been, been led to expect. I take a step closer. We both know I am here and not here to conduct any important business. She smiles that particular smile again. There's a short silence. The conversation turns to personal matters, and the things we still don't know about one another. You could be rid of one danger from all the dangers the Nath holds. Which would you strike out? 
the threat posed by the devils. Yes, they are blight on London. Reverend is warning us all of the devils in the streets. I'm not certain what they want, but I am afraid of them. Mr. Pages says they are a nuisance, but that the loss of a soul should not trouble Londoners. Mr. Pages is a fucking idiot. And there was a bit about how fewer souls in the Nath would be longevitant for us. He did not explain his meaning, but I think his fears are not the same as those of Reverend. Let's see. Talk about her childhood. She tells me about her life as a child, about the estate where she grew up, the horses and the tenant farmers. Then the railway came, a loud, dirty thing that ran too close to their land for, their, for her mother's tastes. That bred arguments in the household, with her uncle staunchly supporting the advance of progress. It is hard to tell from the story exactly how old Grizz was when this happened. In her narrative, it sounds sometimes as though she was a child listening at keyholes, sometimes a girl almost out of the schoolroom, with no patience for anything her mother might ever say. But somewhere in that compound of memories is the source of Grizz the politician, or Grizz the civil servant. Where to go? We have- we find we each have more to say. Don't elope with any of your senses, fillers. It'll be dreadfully awkward. Now, it would invalidate their form. Completely unacceptable. I'm glad you came out of your attic at last. Chapman's wasn't the same without you. Alright. Let's see whether Diopolis has anything. Your timing could not be better. A young canon in my care has placed his soul in mortal jeopardy. I mentioned the Devil's Townhouse to him. Next I knew, Reginald was gone. I draw my own conclusions. Reginald? Huh. Hmm. Ask him if the canon's soul is truly in danger. Is his soul truly in danger? I imagine for one as fervent as poor Reginald, his soul will be too tempting to resist. I worry about the young man. I would hasten to his rescue, but... He tugs on his, uh, on his dog collar, is so itching. I fear my motivations for an unexpected call would be seen through. Agreed. It's despite the chilly atmosphere. Whatever you want. Rescue the cannon of Southwark. Please tell me that didn't use up an entire... Okay, good. I am greeted in the parlor. Voices can be heard from another room, deeper in the consulate. I see all of the city's riffraff have come to burden us in a single afternoon. I thought you Londoners had rules about this sort of behavior. A breach of etiquette, I think you'd call it. If you will but admit you desire my soul... My dear boy, I could not lie to a vicar. Canon, I serve at the Cathedral of Southwark. Another mortal in the Devil's Den! He nods to me. What has brought you- oh, What has brought you here? <laughs> uh, I'm drawn to him. It seems like I'm drawn to him. In every life. <laughs> yeah. I was- I was drawn to see you again. There is an heir of the bordello in here. But I pray you do not succumb to it. My goodness, the canon does reveal himself. Pray ensure he does not. I came here to test myself against the devils by placing my soul in peril. Though they are proving strangely reluctant to engage, no doubt my zeal gives them pause. Your soul lacks distinctive features. And therefore interest. Yeah, yeah. You just know that you can't. You just, that's just sour grapes, isn't it? You know you couldn't get it. I mean, <laughs> I know you, Virginia, will be keenly interested him, in him in the future. Although, perhaps not his soul. <laughs> but the feeling will certainly not be mutual. <laughs> uh, good ol'. Uh, 
It's a cheering sight to see my good friend Reginald once again. Well, he's not my good friend yet in this timeline, but I mean, born in London, the two of us are the best of chums. We will be laying seeds to hell together some someday. Uh, if you wish to give it away, we would accept the donation. But to go to the effort of temptation. They had a spiritual argument for Reginald's departure. Jo uh, Job was a good man for resisting the devil when the devil came to him. But if he'd gone looking for the devil, then he'd have just been a fool. Reginald hesitates. The customs of the church are comforting, but they must not be confused for righteousness in themselves. I see he will not go until he has experienced our wiles. Like Saint Anthony, I shall resist all enticement. Do you have many enticements available, dearest Virginia? I am more the stick than the carrot. You certainly look it. <laughs> uh, very well. I mean, Milton here looks like he's been hit in the face with the, with a shovel, and Virginia looks like a shovel. <laughs> Let me look at you. Do not flinch. It is only my breath on your neck. Must you be so physical, Milton? I must ascertain the nature of our subject, Virginia. Fetch the spiritual vinification apparatus. Uh, I have one of those. Let's see. Uh, I just want to see where this is going. Eh. Must you be so close for this fiend? Is that sweat upon your neck? Ah, as I suspected. Cologne. Scented water. Blessed, I assume. An idea of a friend. I assume he bathed in the stuff. You entered our home willingly. I assume to give us your soul to roast and baste and other such things. Pickle. Poach. Pepper. Wonderful, Virginia. That's the spirit. Or soul. Speaking of, do you offer us yours? I do not! I renounce you, Satan, and all of your works! Oh well, that's that then. Apologies, Virginia. I did try. Then my work is done! Michael could not have done it better. Milton, what is a Michael? I believe it is what they call an Archangel. Which they, amusingly, imagine to be our opposite number. Though in this instance, I think it might merely be a man. One whose name you are unfit to speak. Ah yes, Michael. That old bugger. You, you cannot be in league with them. Agree, I'm not. I am not. You are clearly in need of spiritual counsel to have found yourself here. I shall be at St. Alban's Proto-Martyr proto if you decide to mend your heart. Thank you for clearing up that situation. Most vexing when we are minding our own business. Oh, there we have it. Let's see. Ask whether it's true that people here collect souls. I've heard a rumor that you ask people for their souls. And by rumor, <laughs> by rumor I mean the situation just prior. We? Me? All of you. That you go around asking for souls. I'm more interested in unpublished manuscripts, poetry, that sort of thing. So you're a publisher? Dear me, no. I'm keen to hear about your business, all the same. Keep giving answers like th that, and this will take all day. I am not inclined to discuss it. And now it is time for you to go. Very well, very well. Alright, actually, so the soul, person south work. Sounds bad. I 
Horatia arrives late to supper. What's on your boots, Horatia? It looks like milk and it smells like a sewer. Don't go into the basement. Totally, they already know about this tentacle. I know there's a tentacle thing down there. Do you? I saw it the night of the fall. I didn't realize it had visited us so early. It's not only that. The floor down there is flooded. I moved everything to higher shelves. Hmm. Is there anything I can help with? Only if you want to help carry buckets of nasty water out of the basement. We form a bucket line. Horatia insists on taking the basement position. She still wants no one else to enter. But I stand on the stairs and take buckets from her and carry them out, out to the gutter. They do not smell like ordinary water. My eyes burn. Do you know how to get to Hogs Lane Market on your own? I always go to the corner with a red-handled pump. Then count to 20 and turn left and go straight ahead without looking back. You wind up somewhere else entirely if you look back. Likely just a corruption of Hogs Lane, but I'd keep my pet pig on a leash all the same. <laughs> Indeed. Alright. Uh, got all Reginald. It'll be, nice, it'll be nice to see more of him from before the war. Another morning, another newspaper. Archie brought one, and the headlines read... Ferret's menace eradication seek, seeks reliable employees unafraid of rats. I'm not too unoccupied otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why does it keep telling me that? I literally just did that. Alright. On that note, it seems like a good time to stop. Not this for... Yeah, nearly an hour now. Ow. So, yeah. episode of Mask of the Rose. We met the best Fallen London character. <laughs> and we confronted pages about the whole tentacle thing, where, which he stonewalled us about. And we met some devils. Yeah. Anyways, without any further ado, I have been Joe Bob. And I'm very peeved. And remember, dislike the video, unsubscribe if you're for some reason subscribed, and leave a nasty comment in the comment section down below. So long, suckers. <laughs>